everyone. Welcome to another book review by Joe Spinach. Today we are uh, making a book review on Sir Winston Churchill, probably the great statesman that has ever lived, or at least definitely the greatest statesman of the 20th century. Now, I will eventually make a video specifically on my opinions on Churchill, which are very highly, but for now, uh, a general book review on how to read Churchill. So firstly, the first two books I will recommend, by far the best ones, will be by Martin Gilpert, A Life, which is a two-volume book. It's a brilliant piece of literature, 9 out of 10, which takes the detailed life of Winston Churchill and uh, breaks it down to from the start as a child, the way he grew up, to the wars he fought, uh, the circumstances in which uh, he had dealt throughout his life and put a massive emphasis through his political career and the Second World War, the difficulties he faces, and he cross-references this with uh, all of the other factors uh, which creates a very uh, unbiased uh, biography. And thus, Martin Gilbert can be easily said to be one of the best historians of Churchill. And on that note, on Martin Gilbert, we have The Power of Words, which is his book that analyzes the importance of Winston Churchill's speeches, uh, what happened around them when it comes to uh, for him saying those spe uh, speeches as well as the impact it had on the public and the world stage. So the Church of the Power of Words is more of a book for people that care about oratory and what's the importance to be a good and a decisive leader and how that, that can influence history and as well as see the character of Churchill and the life, it's literally the life of Winston Churchill. Then we also have The Finest Years uh, by Max Hastings, The Churchill, the Prophetic Statesman by James Humes, and ironically enough, The Churchill Factor by Boris Johnson. Now, The Prophetic Statesman by uh, James Humes, it's a quite a small book, uh, it's a short book, and the author tries to make the argument on why Churchill was a brilliant statesman. Uh, by itself, it's a good book, a generally very small book. I liked it because it was a good summary of his, of his main points. I wouldn't recommend it as a start, but if you are not so interested to learn his general uh, life story, but just wants to understand why Churchill is so important in the whole stage, then I recommend that book. The Churchill Factor by Boris Johnson. It's actually, ironically enough, a, quite a book good book uh, written by a politician and uh, quite historically accurate. And I was quite amazed, to be honest, when I've read it. I, I thought it would be a biased piece where Boris Johnson will cherry pick parts of uh, Winston Churchill uh, story to kind of portray himself as the successor of Churchill, as we have seen that many conservative politicians have been trying to do since the death of Churchill. But, well, this thing does exist in the book. That's why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Uh, nonetheless, the argumentations of the book are pretty good and on the point, and it is a historical piece of book, um, a political historical piece uh, of work that analyzes the importance that Churchill uh, had on the world stage and the influence uh, of that importance. And on that note, we go to a brilliant book Max, by Max Hastings, of course, uh, The Finest Years. Now, Max Hastings is one of the greatest uh, World War II historians that you can find. And uh, ex this is exactly what's the book about. And I could have even given this book a 9.5 out of 10, mainly because of how good is to deal with the biases and the focus it gives on directly the actions, the consequences of those actions of Churchill, the character of Churchill it had on the people around him, how he managed to deal with other people, how other people saw him and the positives as well as uh, the negatives. 
So in general, we recommend for you to understand Churchill, Max Hastings, The Finest Years, as well as A Life by Martin Gilbert. Both of them are one of the two most brilliant World War II historians you can find, and of course, this shows in their work. And of course, you can understand Churchill and his brilliance by reading exactly his own works. Now, Churchill has written a lot of books, like a lot of books, but for me, the best books were the books of uh, World War II, which are the six original books, which had the have been converted to four books and I've only written the four books which is the conversion of the other six which in these books of course you can detect some strong biases uh, by Winston, by Sir Winston Churchill nonetheless they are quite good uh, historical pieces of work and you kind of see uh, the um, POV side of the politician himself talking in the most honest manner as he could and, and of course start trying to protect his image but trust me all of the other books do a much better job at uh, protecting his image than uh, Churchill himself does. Now uh, I'm giving them 7.5 because it has some strong biases, but outside of that, they are great pieces of work. But I recommend these books mainly for people that care specifically about World War II and specifically they care about uh, the, how Churchill thought during those uh, uh, during that period of time. Now, that will be the books I will recommend to start for you to read on Sir Winston Churchill. A few words before I close. I'm going to release a video on my opinion specifically on Churchill on a later date, but there are many critics out there criticizing Churchill, and all of those critics fail to do a very simple thing, actually bloody read Churchill. So actually read a decent biography, not written by a professor that has bloody no idea who Churchill was, but by written by a serious uh, historians such as Martin Gilbert or Max Hastings and after you read that book then try to do your criticism. There's a lot of things you can criticize Churchill on and he wasn't an ubermensch, he made a lot of mistakes but that's the whole point of Churchill. He was a human, he was a mortal, he knew that he was a mortal. Nonetheless, he is a prophetic statesman because his absoluteness in the moral virtues of democracy is what makes Churchill the greatest uh, statesman of the 20th century. That's why me personally, I am a Churchillian in my beliefs. Now, on that topic, in a later date, thank you for watching and have a great day.